Hi, this is Tim Clark with End Times Matrix News, and we're coming to you live today with Chris, and we're going to have a great show based off some information we heard on the Giants returning, and also some predictive programming and a special code that Chris uncoded in these predictive programming movies. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing good. Good, good. I thought this would be a neat show because I heard Greg Evenson from The Hagman Show, and I just tuned in because I hadn't heard him in a long time. You know, he's been recovering from, I believe it was eight surgeries, but his information was extremely interesting that he was presenting because he's one of these people that has deep, deep connections with the special ops units of the military who relay information. And I thought what was very interesting that brought it up for this show and for the predictive programming aspects of this show was that he brought forth that 2016, or as he said, possibly even early 2017 at the latest, that we would start seeing the return of the Giants. And I thought, now that is quite a statement to make (laughs) on a national radio show that uh, these Giants are going to be returning. We've been talking about CERN and the portals and what's the purpose of the portals and the things coming through the portals. And this was just another one of these connections for us to make about the Giants returning. And uh, I thought it was interesting coming from military assets that we're going to be seeing this. The main points I took was that he's talking about the Giants returning, coming through portals near the pyramids. They were connecting the pyramids to the portals to the giants. I found that these underground tunnels, evidently, that connected Denver Airport and all across the country, the honeycomb that we thought was just for the elites to be in their little bunkers, are also ways of transporting these monsters basically to their destinations and then a wave of these things just descending on humanity all at one time. So that's what spurred today's show as far as the predictive programming. So I said to Chris, well, let's take a look at all these movies that we're seeing because I'm seeing a lot of this Nephilim giant symbolism in these movies. We absolutely found some really interesting connections. Where would you like to start, Chris? Well, I wanted to comment and say that even in the Denver airport, they have Titans, giant monsters coming out from underneath the ground, like an art display. Yeah, it's a mural, one of these predictive programming murals that's at the Denver airport. And it's a very creepy photo. It does show the giants rising from the earth. Between Steve Quayle and Evenson and the military reporting, it really is kind of connecting the Nazi Hitler going to Antarctica thing, the, the giants in the earth being released from their cells, basically, the pits opening, things are coming out. All this stuff is, you know, a little too fantastical for most people to even contemplate. When you think of the verse, men's hearts will fail them for what's coming on the earth. If you saw a bunch of giants popping up and walking through your neighborhood, you think some people might have some coronaries (laughs) based on that? I think so. It really stimulated, as in the days of Noah, is very literal. The flood destroyed the giants. And as we've said in the past, apotheosis show, the hybrids and children of Cain are manufacturing these hybrid armies. They basically look to do away with those that possess the temple, which is the Christian population. So just as the giants were wiped out in the flood, they seek to wipe out Christianity from the face of the earth and have the Luciferian or the Antichrist age. And we're seeing it all in these movies. The movie Cell that you sent me was quite interesting with how they are getting attacked with a certain pulse and then there are certain people i guess these are the people that represent the ones not sealed by god become zombies and they are manifested with demons and they kill the other people in the movie and then the symbolism on one of the front covers with the eye in the tower that you pointed out to me that the eye looks like saturn and then the portal going up to the eye, like the Birkelin currents, mm-hmm. was very interesting. But when you started pointing these movies out to me, 
I started to realize a lot of things like time is running out and it has this battery and we know Saturn is a sulfuric acid battery. This is about the negative and the positive and the cosmic egg, the big bang Mm -hmm. concern. Noticing in all these movies, the words awakening, the apocalypse, the underworld, alien. And in most of the movies that I see coming out, they have giants in them. It's such a huge picture to see. This is the way the occult works. So the average person that is connected to the world and not to the spiritual things of God through the Holy Spirit, they don't see these things. They don't understand. This is a huge process that the fallen have done in the world. That's why Jesus said, don't love the world or anything in the world. And that's why we are to have spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to hear. This is a lot of predictive programming and it gets into the minds of people. And that's how Satan gets to people is through their consciousness. Yeah. And I think the cell movie, what's fascinating to me when you actually look at the cover, you can see that the ancient sky symbols of Saturn from the Thunderbolts project, you can also see the eye of Sauron from the Lord of the Rings, the two towers where the eye is up in the tower on top of the tower. And I also think the battery symbolism of Saturn and time running out. And it is time a charged linear process that begins and ends. And of course, we know that God exists outside of time. And and it is interesting that time comes to a standstill and that these people share the symbolism of breaking clocks like Big Ben and Alice in Wonderland had some of that clock symbolism and also with breaking time so that time doesn't run out on them. But time is running out is a two-way thing. Time is ending, but time is running out on the human race. And I think that's what the Cell movie says. There's a future in technology, but not for us. That gets into the whole thing with why is all this Tesla technology, all these technologies that seem to be building the grid system. We see all the benefits of technology, but it's also being put in place to run the New World Order hive mind. Cell phones, when you get right down to it, there are more cell phones than there are TVs and things like that. They know every human out there, no matter where they are. And we also understand pulsing technologies and the rider technologies, the ride waves and things like that. We know that there's all these mind control technologies that can come through waves. That's fascinating. The other aspect is just the term cell also it can be DNA cell. That can also be the cell that they break out of from the pit, as in the Titans breaking out of the cell. So there's a lot of layering in this one movie. Yeah, we have the Civil War coming out. Yes, Marvel's Civil War is basically the predictive programming of the blue against the red, which fits with our, I guess, our purple rain theme from Prince, the purple, the merging of blue and red. And so Marvel's Civil War is basically uh, Captain America, old America, moral America, humanity versus the transhumanist Tony Stark and the Reds that will adopt the Luciferian age. They're colliding, they're promoting civil war, they're promoting race wars, there's concept of the unenhanced, which are people who are genetically born human, and then the enhanced, which are going to be the transhumanists. This is very prevalent in the Marvel's universe. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series is running this right now. They did a transhumanist episode last week where everybody was altered and they had just the people who are altered versus the unaltered. And this week they're doing the Giants Connection, which fits in with the topic that we're doing today, where the Cree return. What's interesting is we have a shot of the Cree coming out from a coal mine. So again, it's emerging from a hole in the ground concept and the Cree are blue and they basically are the panspermia, the Prometheus people who altered humanity, the Sakurai Sitchin altering humanity through tampering with the DNA of humanity. So that's what they're doing right now. And then they're going to be coming out with their spinoff of this, which is Inhumans, which is the Marvel's franchise for these altered individuals. 
So basically we're seeing to be altered when you think of it as in the mark of the beast is to take whatever this DNA transference thing is, which will transform the DNA and be forever erase you from the Lamb's Book of Life. So in humans being enhanced, all these things are all preludes to the deceived population into accepting the mark of the beast in the Luciferian age. Right. When you were showing me the pictures of the Cree, they had the Star of Venus on their head. Mm -hmm. The Star of Venus, it can be in different shapes, but it basically is the eight-pointed star. It's also called the Star of Anu. So the Star of Venus is basically a big symbol because it's the same symbol of the Sol Invictus star. The star is on old coins from Augustus Caesar. It is on the temples that they use to worship Jupiter and Venus because they believe that they're the offspring. And that's the same thing with what's going on right now with this I Am Invictus and someone put a video out that was very good. I must have missed Obama saying the quote from the Sol Invictus poem that Nelson Mandela would say quite often. And then he was in prison. We know that he was a communist and he was also in the Knights of Malta. You know, he's in the Knights of Malta. Sam Davis Jr. was in the Knights of Malta. They are close to Aleister Crawley because they're all Satanist. You know, Queen Elizabeth is Knights of Malta and the royal family. Of course, all of them are reptilian. They're in the Knights of Malta. But that cross that the Knights of Malta wear, the Vatican also wears them too. And they are also seen quite often with the Knights of Malta. Mm -hmm. So that cross, they wear it on themselves also. And we've explained before in our shows, that four-pointed cross is the cross of the Knights of Malta. It makes a pyramid when you pull it up, and it makes eight sides. So there's four, and then four. So there's four hidden, as above, so below. And it also mm -hmm. represents the Ogdode. So here we go with the Ogdode. So basically, Sol Invictus represents the Ogdode. It represents Jupiter, Mithraism. If you look up Sol Invictus and Mithraism and Jupiter, it's all the same thing. Because these people, like President Obama, believe that they are the offspring of the sons of Jupiter. And this is their symbol, the eight-pointed star, Sol Invictus. I looked up the word soul and I translated it. I love codes and decoding things. So through this word soul, backwards it means quad. Quad also is translated to chi and it's also translated to earth. So backward soul is earth and forward soul is the sun or gold representing the Antichrist. All this research with Anthony and CERN and understanding that the Bible says that the tree in the garden of consciousness, this is how Satan got to Eve and promised her to be as gods. So this is his same promise, just like we talked about in our last show with the apotheosis. The same thing as you could be as gods if you go through the tree of consciousness. If you believe the lie, if you follow the world, if you do not follow Jesus Christ and you follow the patterns of the world and you want to be your own God and you are not in need of a savior and you think you can save yourself, then that is the lie of Satan. That is the lie mm -hmm. of the snake, of the serpent in the garden. This is what we're here for, is to explain to everybody that CERN is pretty much a machine that is morphing the eye of Lucifer. Aleister Crawley wore the star of Lucifer on his head. And the star of Anu is the same star. The IHS is Isis Horus Set. It's the same thing of the Sons of Jupiter and the Ogdo, the Order of the Seraphim. It's all the same thing. And so this is who they worship and they want to become in power. So I believe that, like Tim was saying, listening to the Hagmans, hearing this anonymous person, speaking about these giants coming back 
through the portals. I mean, this seems absurd to the regular person because the regular person is taught through the world system. But when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of his children's hearts and we wake up, we start to realize that this is not absurd. The Bible is real. The prophecy has not been fulfilled and it will be fulfilled. And I do believe like the anonymous military person said that it will be this year or next year. And the reason that I believe that is because the world leaders are coming together all together to prepare for war. All the countries are preparing for war. The United States is about to collapse. The financial system is about to collapse. And Tim, didn't you send me something about the... Yeah, I, I sent you uh, an interesting couple shots about the atomic giant, which I found very interesting that was on DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Again, the play on the word tomorrow, as in Tomorrowland, the festival that we tracked in the past, Alice in Wonderland, you know, Tomorrowland. This tomorrow world is this fairy tale world with giants and pixies and all this other stuff. But it's going to be horrendous when people get there. But the point that I wanted to show was that here they are, even in the Legends of Tomorrow show, showing in the future the weapon being used to make people submit was this giant it was a giant but it was a giant with like an atomic symbol on it or an atom symbol on it and i believe when we looked at that closely it was also the star of venus again on that figure again they just are messaging from the iron giant movie which parallels with the bible verse about the iron and clay miry clay being blended and the giant aspect again you know in the days of noah stuff again i find this giants thing just really interesting and then also another general general milley his speech where he's talking to cadets at one of their graduations about that you'll be facing hybrid armies and little green men <laughs> so <laughs> it's another source that's from the military that plenty of people have seen so giants little green men hybrid armies coming out of the ground coming out of the holes coming out of portals coming out near pyramids it's just really overwhelming, the right. amount of information. And he said simultaneously, he said... Simultaneously. Yeah, simultaneously, that all of these things were going to be chaotic going on at the same time. And mm -hmm. so why do we have this general coming out, preparing the cadets for these things? Why, why even say it? Why even prepare them for for this and why do we have so many military people coming out saying the same things that there's going to be war there is going to be technology like we've never seen before it's going to be something that people don't expect the bible says everyone's going to be happy marrying and what does it say, Tim? Basically a paraphrase. At the time when you least expected, sudden destruction is going to come on the earth. And this order out of chaos thing parallels with that. Basically, it just seems like a blitzkrieg, like the Nazi blitzkrieg, but with Nephilim. <laughs> Right. Where what they do is with a blitzkrieg is you just overwhelm with speed and power to break through, to overwhelm your opponent and then surround them and crush them. This is a coordinated effort by the alphabet agencies that are run by the Satanists of the world to coordinate the military with the implanted generals in each army to cooperate with these portals opening and then these things blitzkrieging humanity, basically. And that, that's why I think that people are going to, they're just going to have heart attacks. You know, for Chris and I, we research this stuff all the time and we look at all of the stuff and how do you come up with all these things with Saturn and the plasma conduit fields and the Berkeley currents and all this stuff. This is so far away from the dancing with the stars mentality <laughs> <laughs> that the dancing with the stars mentality folks or American Idol folks, I could see them just falling right over because they won't be able to even process what they're seeing. Right. And I was going to say that when you had me looking through these movies and all of this predictive programming with Egypt, the gods of Egypt and... Mm -hmm set and all of these different gods and different movies coming out and the Nephilim, the Black Panther in the Marvel with the giants on that. 
And we know mm-hmm. Black Panther also means leopard. So does Jaguar. You translate the name and it means leopard. And we see that Jaguar also with the Soul Invictus because it is a symbol of war coming. Also with the movies, when I was looking through them, I noticed a pattern, a two, three, mm-hmm. five. So through 2016, 2017, 2018, up to 2020, I was looking through all the movies that are coming out and I noticed this two, three, five pattern. So I said, well, let me look into the two, three, five pattern and see basically what it was. And it just blew me away because the two, three, five pattern, it is the fissile isotope of uranium used in the first atomic bombs, U-235. You know what? It's also interesting is that you remember the Manhattan Project and they had the wicker man being blown up in the atomic bomb? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. The atomic giant that I just pointed out in DC's Legends of Tomorrow and then this wicker man, this atomic thing, this atomic age of these giants, I think. So there's something very strange about this 235 Right. Isotope in the giants. The 235 pattern is a triangular centered number. It is the capstone. And when I looked up 235, it is centered inside of the tetrahedron. So when I started to break down this number, I got the same code as the Jubilees that we decoded in the 50th Super Bowl and the 50th Vatican II. We have this pattern going 322, 369, 43, and basically what it is is a star system, and it's a number system because Saturn is supposedly... It's like a time machine. (laughs) Right. Well, you know, this gets us back into the whole thing about the spirit of the Lord in the Bible, that it's like a computer in the sense that when you look at there, there's a new piece that will speak to you every day differently, even though you've seen it 1,000 times. When we look at... This numbering from the occult side it seems to be showing us, as Casey would say, the matrix is, this is their matrix of numbering going on. So the Bible has the spirit of the Lord in it, but this other thing is this numerical matrix that's running this world. Right, it's their Antichrist matrix. That's why they are Luciferians and Satanist and... They're all this legion of fallen angel DNA and Nephilim, Titan, Olympian hybrids. And they do believe that they are from this bloodline and they are of the Antichrist spirit. And so this is the way that they believe. The sons of Jupiter are the ones who hung Jesus on the cross because Pointus Pilate worked for Tiberius, which he was an, a Roman emperor. These Roman emperors were very, they, I can't even repeat what they did. They were the most disgusting. I mean, they would turn into transvestites. They would marry men and women. I cannot repeat what they would do to babies and children. They right. would kill their own family. These Roman emperors were disgusting. Well, that's why when you look at the sons of Jupiter, and especially how depraved they became sexually amoral and all this stuff, and then you see the parallel with Obama and Nero, the destruction of Rome and the destruction of the United States, and they parallel exactly a depraved, debauched, arrogant god mocker And that's what the sons of Jupiters were. They're all God mockers. They all make themselves gods, deify themselves, just as Obama basically has deified himself. And so you see the same spirit that operated in the sons of Jupiter operating in Barack Obama. Yeah. And, you know, he's married to a man. It's quite obvious. And it was interesting because I was looking up some things the other day and I saw David Cameron's wife with an Adam's apple. And I was like, wow, you know, and so they fake their pregnancies and they, you know, she had a baby bump at sometimes if they would show pictures of her bending down and how it didn't look natural. And we have technology today. So there are so many people that are taking pictures and posting things and analyzing things and understanding things. And so we're in this age to where people are going to sink or swim. They're going to understand or they're not. There's a lot of people trying to find the truth and trying to understand things 
but it's very clear that these occult leaders are Satanist. They are Luciferians, and they are fighting for this world. They are fighting to rule this world. They want people to believe that Jesus isn't coming back. They want people to believe their tricks and their lies, that the Bible's a fraud when it is not clearly. It cannot be proven that it is. It's basically proven that it is not. It is absurd for anyone to think that. Jesus is coming back. And actually, one thing I wanted to say before we go, Tim, is that we are the children of God, and we have authority over all demons, over all fallen angels, over all evil in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is something that they do not want us to have faith in and to believe. They want to put fear in people so that way they cannot be conquered because they know that Jesus is Lord, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is when he comes back because he is Lord above all, and the demons even fear him because he has authority over everything. We're his children, so we have authority also in his name, like the word says. So we don't have anything to fear. We just need to understand the days that are coming and stay in contact with God through the Holy Spirit and with each other and stay in prayer until he comes back and not fear. So that way we can understand what's going on in these times. I completely agree. The only way for Christians to handle this time is not out of fear, but to stand in their authority. And the authority of the Lord is 100% over this occult world. That's why they've been hiding for forever. But the only thing that's got them to come forward now is that time has run out on them too. Their judgment is what they're going to have to face it unless they think they can escape back into a broken time loop and avoid the judgment of God. So it's fascinating, this whole topic of dealing with the days of Noah literally being the return of the giants as part of it and these hybrid armies. As Christians, we need to stand in the authority, pray and operate in that authority. Until the Lord removes us out of here, we've been called to basically expose the darkness, and it's been very interesting, the things that led us into seeing all these <laughs> things. But it's a privilege to work for the Lord, to expose the darkness, and pray with power and authority against these things once they're exposed. That's right. I'm looking forward to Jesus coming to get me, and I always laugh and tease my friends and say, he's going to come and get me with the fiery horses and take me right up to heaven, because I asked him if he would, and he would go pick up all my friends, too, and give <laughs> us a ride right to heaven. Sounds great. So you're t trying to tell me that Donald Trump isn't the uh, solution for everything, <laughs> that we're actually going to have to face giants, huh? <laughs> yep, that's right. I do believe that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Another shock. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't in the Bible the children of God defeated the giants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, because and they had faith. And, and if we and have we, faith in God, we can do anything. And we know we went in the end with the Lord, and it's going to be a great time of the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's just going to be one big celebration that we are done with Lucifer and all his ugliness, his filth, and his kingdom that he has here, that it will come to the end. And then there's that big old shout that all the kingdoms of the earth are now under the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And... Yeah, there ain't going to be no more Lucifer after that. Yep, so. that's why we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth, and things are all going to be made new, and I can't wait for that day. Amen. That is just going to be a wonderful day. Well, thank you very much, Chris. I really enjoyed this, this, uh, this whole thing with the predictive programming and the giants and the codes that are coming out. You know, they hear all these codes jumping out. I hope everybody enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.